Theranos, the most evil business in the world. In 2014, the then 30 years old Elizabeth Holmes was at the pinnacle of her success. She had dropped out of Stanford University before founding a firm that was then worth $9 billion and was said to have brought about a revolution in the process of detecting sickness. Theranos claimed that their Edison test could identify serious illnesses like cancer and diabetes with only a few drops of blood and in a short amount of time without the need for uncomfortable needles. In spite of this, the story began to fall apart in 2015. And within a year, Holmes was shown to be a fraud. The technology that she was promoting did not function in any way. And by 2018, the business that she had formed had failed. So what happened to Theranos? And how was this company able to deceive its own investors for such a long time? Well, let's get started. Located in the center of the then growing valley, just south of San Francisco, Stanford University welcomed a 17-year-old Houstonian student in September 2001. Elizabeth Holmes was that student, and not long after she enrolled at Stanford, she conceived of an innovative idea that would change the world. And, in theory, it was. In March 2004, when Holmes was just turning 20 years old, she left Stanford in an effort to carry out her business plan for a healthcare innovation company that she had first referred to as Real-Time Cures. In September of 2018, 15 years after her original foray into the odd world of corporate Silicon Valley, Holmes was charged with conspiracy and wire fraud, and Theranos subsequently halted operations. Her initial foray into this world occurred in 2003. The series of events that took place over the course of those 17 years culminated in one of the most stunning scandals that have ever been associated with Silicon Valley and rocked the community of healthcare innovators as a whole. Holmes was a bright student at Stanford, and she mistakenly believed that her own ideas would be more important to her future career than a college degree and her supposition was somewhat accurate in certain respects. Her idea for Theranos was really innovative and creative. As it started to take shape in the basement of a student residence in Palo Alto, Holmes' company, which would eventually destroy everything in its path, was fairly ingenious. Theranos said that it had creative innovative procedures for collecting blood samples, reviewing those samples, and analyzing the collected patient data all with the intention of improving patient outcomes and reducing the costs associated with providing medical treatment. Simply put, Theranos promised that their technology would make it possible to test and diagnose elements using a negligible quantity of blood, just a few drops of blood obtained from a pinprick on the finger. Actually, the maker of the Edison device stated that it would be far more cost-effective and would require one one-hundredth to one one-thousandth of the blood that is generally required for blood testing in conventional laboratories. The blood would be taken by simply pricking a finger. If only the technology had worked, it would have been a boon to those who have veins that are difficult to access, are afraid of needles or have little financial resources. But the problems were never going to be solved. Second, Theranos' claims that the Edison machine could process a particular minimal blood volume were just inaccurate. In other circumstances, the sample was required to be diluted to such an extent that it rendered it impossible to accurately analyze the blood and left significant room for mistakes. Also, Theranos is accused of doing its laboratory work in unauthorized facilities, which other parties often ran, and of utilizing equipment that third parties also owned. Blood testing would have been added to the growing list of enterprises that Silicon Valley has already devastated if Theranos' plan had been carried out properly. The problem was that Holmes was actually unable to carry out her plan in any way, shape, or form. Yet, it is quite unlikely that anyone could have implemented her plan because scientific knowledge is not yet sufficiently advanced to deal with the difficulties presented by the Theranos mission. But what was it about Holmes that made her so deceiving and believable? 
Holmes demonstrated signs of having sociopathic tendencies. Despite the fact that she lacks the conventional attributes of charm, Holmes has proven throughout the course of her career that she is remarkably alluring. She has the unusual ability to stare at the person she is speaking to without blinking for several minutes at a time. Her voice has a tumultuous past, and as a result, it is unsettling while being utterly fascinating. It was later revealed that she had emulated a deeper voice for the better part of her career in an effort to appear more macho and create credibility in a sector that men in the field of technology predominantly occupy. But at least in concept, Theranos was a wonderful company. If the innovative proposal proposed by the corporation had been implemented in a perfect world, it would have helped an incalculable number of individuals. However, the company did the complete opposite of what was expected. The Edison device that was built by Theranos was relied on by a number of patients, in which many of those patients were misled by Holmes's promises and finally tricked by the equipment's failure to perform properly. When the firm was incorporated in April of 2008 under the moniker Theranos, Holmes had managed to raise more than $6 million from various investors by the time that year's calendar turned to December. The initial investment ballooned to $92 million by the year 2010, and it had reached a whopping $600 million by the month of May 2018. The amount of money that Theranos has raised since it was founded has increased a hundredfold in just 14 years, thanks to prominent investors like Betsy DeVos and Rupert Murdoch. Behind closed doors, an organization called Theranos, which had a stellar public reputation, was running one of the most incredible scams in Silicon Valley's business history while simultaneously providing investors with claims that were materially untrue as well as misleading. The company failed to disclose pertinent facts. Above all else, Theranos was built on a foundation of dishonesty. The company spread false information about its earnings, investments, and capabilities when it first opened its doors. According to Matthew Harper's reporting for Forbes, even though Theranos stated that it had annual sales of $100 million, the company actually had real revenues of $100,000. But just how impressive do you think Holmes' lying skills were? And do you agree that what she was doing was utterly wrong? Tell us in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos. But just how delusional was Holmes? The figures provided by Theranos were grossly misrepresented. During Holmes's leadership, the company's valuation, sales, and investments were all artificially high. It is unsettling that the company persisted in building the Edison device, despite the fact that it was unable to execute and lied about the capabilities and usage of its technology. Walgreens, which was designated in the corporate documents of Theranos as Pharmacy A, had a close and productive working relationship with Theranos. Around 40 wellness centers have been opened by Theranos in the course of 2013, the majority of which could be found inside Walgreens pharmacies and were concentrated in and around the Phoenix metropolitan area. The technology known as Minilab, which was developed with the intention of being utilized in Walgreens pharmacies, was a reduced and enhanced version of the original Edison device. According to Holmes, who characterized the Minilab as the size of a computer printer, a test battery would run with as little as 160 microliters of blood obtained from a finger prick. Holmes stated that the system was capable of doing up to 40 different tests. However, she only gave clinical information for 11 of those tests. The fact that the Minilab was not functioning properly when Theranos products started showing up in Walgreens stores was the source of the problem. Forbes said that Balwani and Holmes told their engineers to start using other firms' gadgets in unlawful methods to check finger prick samples while they suppressed this information from pharmacy authorities. In addition to overtly lying about the company's technology and scamming the Walgreens partner pharmacies, Holmes spoke to the media on many occasions about the benefits of the Minilab, despite the fact that the device had not yet been developed. 
When it was fully ready for usage in 2016, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, discovered that the device could only complete 12 tests instead of the 40 that Holmes had stated it could do. The most upsetting element of the controversy may be the way it affected the patients whom it was presumably designed to help in the first place.